It's time now for our call of the day. Last week, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced the social media platform was rebranding as Meta to capture its focus on building out augmented reality platforms and the metaverse. The company already plans this year to jumpstart that effort. Here to discuss this and more is BTIG analyst Mark Palmer. And Mark, you recently published a note about what this rebrand by Facebook and slew of artificial intelligence, artificial reality related announcements means for digital currencies and NFTs and other blockchain based worlds already. So what is that connection between what Facebook is doing now and what's happening in these other blockchain based virtual worlds already? Yes, well, in a sense, uh, Facebook or uh, now Meta uh, is somewhat late to the game uh, as it pertains to the metaverse, because uh, the metaverse has been under construction now for the last number of years, and, and that is within the, the construct of blockchain and NFTs and cryptocurrencies. You know, we already see virtual worlds uh, that have been well established. Uh, the likes of Decentraland and the Sandbox and, and Axie Infinity. Um, so Facebook coming along uh, was really viewed by those within the space as uh, something of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, uh, the announcement definitely drew attention to the metaverse. There, we have individuals who had never heard the term metaverse who are now hearing about it in the news. They're talking about it. They're, they're beginning to understand what it, what it means. Uh, on the other side, uh, the perception is that Facebook is an imperfect messenger uh, as it pertains to uh, building what they describe as the metaverse. You know, frankly, uh, most of uh, those who are in the blockchain world with whom we've spoken, you know, just see Facebook's effort as described as being kind of a warmed over virtual reality, uh, levering off of what they already have with Oculus, uh, as opposed to something that, that's truly innovative. And um, there, there, there are big differences here uh, between what you see in the blockchain world and what you see with Facebook. Mark, uh, maybe you can break this down for the newbies out there that don't follow the space as closely of, as you. You highlighted there's, there's been movement off of this news in tokens of other immersive metaverse games. What does that mean and, and where are you seeing these moves? Yes, um, you know, we're seeing that the tokens of, uh, as I mentioned, Decentraland and others that, that have moved on this. Um, frankly, uh, even within the equity world, one of the names that uh, has really benefited is Galaxy Digital. It's a company that we cover. We have a buy recommendation. Uh, Galaxy Digital runs a number of funds. Uh, they're called the Galaxy Interactive Funds, where they are investing in the metaverse, in the NFTs, which uh, are really the, uh, the means of through which ownership is expressed in the metaverse um, and Galaxy Digital shares have, uh, have really taken off uh, and, and as we've seen reverberation from what's going on here. Uh, but but I, what I think is, is important to note is that if you look at the sorts of uh, virtual worlds in which Galaxy is investing, uh, these are, um, they are decentralized. They are permissionless. Uh, they are open, they're transparent, and, and they're owned by communities. You know, so they have tokens, which uh, investors can uh, trade in, but uh, they're usually run by uh, what's known as a decentralized autonomous organization, a DAO, which, which means there's no board of directors, there's no centralized company. In contrast to that, um, you know, what we're hearing about vis-a-vis -vis Meta, it's centralized, it's closed, it's opaque, um, it's permissioned, and, and it's owned by one of the largest companies in the world. That, that's a very stark contrast. Mark, one of the things that Facebook and now Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg had said during last week's conference was that he projected the metaverse would eventually reach 1 billion users and support hundreds of billions of dollars in commerce in the next decade. I'm wondering, as an investor, is Facebook now Meta the best way to play this sort of investment if you believe those sorts of projections, or are there other areas that investors should be focused on? Well, again, you know, we, we fully agree that the metaverse um, is going to be and, and is already, frankly, uh, and, and a tremendous way through which uh, investors can uh, gain access to, you know, the, the next generation of the Internet. Um, you know, again, we think that there are going to be 
uh, many different decentralized uh, versions of the metaverse uh, that um, are, are going to be extremely attractive uh, to users once they understand exactly what they are. Uh, again, um, you know, in the public equity markets, Galaxy uh, Digital through its Galaxy Interactive Funds is, is investing in this. You know, we believe there are going to be other expressions of that. Coinbase has its Coinbase Ventures arm, uh, which is investing in metaverse plays as well. Um, you know, all of these are, are bubbling up. And again, uh, NFTs, uh, non-fungible tokens, uh, are the means through which ownership is expressed in this world. And we're beginning to see more and more uh, firms in the public equity realm uh, that are getting into the space. Coinbase uh, announced recently that it will be launching uh, an NFT marketplace by the end of the year. Uh, a couple of days after they announced that, they had two and a half million users on a waiting list for that marketplace. You know, so this is coming to investors. It's going to be accessible through uh, the equity markets, through Galaxy, through Coinbase. We think we're going to see others. Um, but uh, the, the upshot is that uh, the metaverse is out there in a decentralized form. And, and frankly, we think that that is the, the most likely uh, uh, winner uh, when, when all is said and done. Mark, how, how difficult is it to put a fair value estimate on, on this stuff, like tokens? I and mean, these are not like uh, investing in a caterpillar where I can go touch and see a dump truck. I mean, talk to us about the analytical process. Yeah, well, um, if you uh, put Bitcoin aside, because Bitcoin is really more like digital gold, it's uh, its, its own uh, animal. Tokens are, uh, as we view it, uh, kind of like the, the tickets that you need to buy at a carnival to go on a ride. And if the rides in that particular carnival are uh, particularly really exciting, uh, then you're going to want to buy uh, those tickets uh, to get access to them. You know, so we look at any of these tokens as being, you know, effectively uh, tickets to carnival. And, you know, from a valuation standpoint, what you're looking at is the revenues that are generated by the projects that are built on the, on the blockchains in question. You know, so if you look at Ethereum, you look at Avalanche, you look at Solana, uh, all of them have attracted developers who are building projects on their blockchains. Uh, those uh, projects are run on uh, the native tokens uh, of those projects. So that could be Ethereum, uh, it could be uh, AVAX in the case of Avalanche, it could be Sol in the case of Solana. Um, you know, so the revenues that are generated by those projects are expressed through those tokens. Frankly, that means you've got a revenue stream that you can uh, assess um, which can translate easily into a stream of cash flows, which can be discounted and valued just like equities. All right, BTIG analyst, Mark Palmer, thank you so much for breaking that down for us.